In this C-sharp programming lesson, you'll learn about an iteration construct, namely the while loop. Iteration constructs are also referred to as looping constructs. They allow you to execute an instruction or a block of instructions repeatedly. That is, over and over again, until some kind of condition is met. In the next lesson, you'll learn about another iteration construct, the for loop. You'll eventually see just how essential iteration is when you're developing applications. Many well-known sorting and searching algorithms and the manipulation of files and data structures depend on iterative code. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. We're going to focus on the basics first. I've already created a Windows Forms application. Let's place a button on the form and give it a name. And we'll change the caption as well. To make some code repeat over and over again, I'm going to use a variable to count my way through the loop. I've called it i for no particular reason. And there is my while loop. Anything inside this block, defined by the curly brackets, will execute repeatedly. This is the exit condition. The loop will repeat while i is less than 5. Every time I pass through the loop, I'm adding 1 to i. I'm incrementing i. So i is getting bigger. It will eventually meet the exit condition. Let's run this and see what happens. Once, twice, three times, four times, five times. And then the loop ends. Let's put another line of code underneath the loop. All done is not within the loop, so it's only going to execute once. Within these curly brackets, I could have many more lines of code. You might remember from an earlier video, I can increment i in a slightly different way. i plus equals 1 means add 1 to i. That will still work. It's also common practice to do it like this. It means the same thing. It means add 1 to i. I'm going to stick with just one instruction inside the loop for now. Now what do you suppose might happen if the value of i is already bigger than 5? The loop isn't executing at all. We've already met the exit condition. Now let's take a look at a variation on the while loop. You might call this a do loop. This time, the exit condition is at the bottom of the loop. Let's see what this one does. That's my original loop in action. And this is the do loop in action. It does exactly the same thing. But what if the value of i is already equal to 5? The code inside the do loop did execute but only once. That's because we're not testing for the exit condition until after it has executed at least once. It's a subtle difference between the while loop and the do loop that you will need to bear in mind. Sometimes, however, it can be very, very useful. 
Now I'm going to show you why a while loop is sometimes referred to as a condition controlled loop. Here's a text file which I've already created using Notepad. I'm going to write some code to read the contents of the text file into my program. Let's take a look at the text file first. It's very simple, I just have a few names. Notice that it's in a folder called Test Folder within my D drive. I'm going to need something called a Stream Reader object. Now don't worry too much about this, it's a technique which I will explain in a lot more detail in a different video. But we can use it now to illustrate something important about a condition controlled loop. I'm declaring a variable called sr of type stream reader. This syntax is probably new to you. I'm using the new keyword to initialize that variable. This is object oriented syntax. And again, you'll find out a lot more about this later. This, you'll recognize, is the path and the file name of my text file. I'm also going to declare a string variable to store each line of text as I read it from the file. I've given that variable the name line of text, but I could call it whatever I like. To read a line of text from the text file, I can do this. And then I'm going to output it. Let's remove this code for now. I don't want it all running. In fact, I'm not going to delete it, I'm just going to comment it out. Commenting out blocks of code like this will stop it from running, but it's still there if I ever want to uncomment it. I just need to highlight it and use this button. I'll talk more about code comments in another lesson. For now, let's just see what the stream reader is doing. It read the first line of text from the file. Let's copy these two lines. This time I read the first three lines of text from the file. You need to imagine that there's a cursor inside that text file, and every time I read a line of text, the cursor moves to the next line, ready to read it. If I want to read all of the text in the file, and perhaps I don't know how many lines there are in there, I can use a while loop, like this. The IntelliCode is suggesting that I close the stream reader. This is a good idea because another program might want to access the file and find that it can't. It's good practice to close a stream reader once you're finished with it. So I'm going to accept that command. Look at my exit condition for this loop. While sr.endofStream equals false. In other words, while I am not at the end of the file, Keep repeating these two lines of code. I'm not using a variable to count my way through the loop this time. The loop will end when I've read all of the data from the file. By the way, I could have written the exit condition in a slightly different way. While not sr.endofStream equals true, it means the same thing. But this time I'm using the logical NOT operator, which you can see is an exclamation mark. In fact, I could have written it like this. While NOT sr.endofStream, it means the same thing, while I am NOT at the end of the file. I could have even done it like this.
Within my exit condition, I'm actually reading a line of text, and I'm saying I want to continue while it is not equal to null. In other words, while I'm still reading something. I don't know if you noticed I typed an exclamation mark, followed by an equal sign, and Visual Studio automatically converted it to a not equal sign. While not sr.end of stream is probably the most common way of specifying this exit condition. Now I'm going to show you something called an infinite loop. Let's comment out this code first. While true equals true. Well, of course, true does indeed equal true. So this loop is going to go on forever. We call it an infinite loop. Well, it's not quite that infinite. I can break out of this code. I'm just going to press this red square. I could have written while x equals x. Or while 1 equals 1. It doesn't really matter. x will always equal x. 1 will always equal 1. But typically, you would say while true equals true. In fact, for short, you can simply say while true. That means the same thing. Now this might strike you as a strange thing to do, but infinite loops definitely have uses. I might, for example, want some kind of animation going on on the form while the application is in use. I can use an infinite loop to do that. You can also write an infinite loop with a way out by using the break command. I'm testing the contents of a text box. If the text box contains the word stop, then I'm using the break command, which will force the loop to stop. There's one more application of a condition-controlled while loop that I'd like to show you. I'm declaring a variable called response of type dialogue result, and I'm initialising it with the value none. This time, I'm using the message box command to collect some input. As well as the usual prompt, I've put a title on there, and I've specified which buttons I want to be displayed on the message box. When the user selects yes or no, their response will go into this variable. I've also used a comment here because I don't want to write lots of code. I just want you to imagine that this particular loop is doing all kinds of complex processing. Watch what happens. Two buttons this time, yes and no. If I say no, everything stops. I'll run the program again. If I say yes, the program continues. Or should I say, the loop continues. Try writing some loops yourself. Get used to the syntax, because you will be using them a lot later on. Remember here, I'm displaying a message five times. Try changing it to output the numbers one to five. Or try outputting all of the even numbers up to ten, for example. Or maybe just the odd numbers up to ten. Can you make it count down from ten? You might also like to create a text file using something like Notepad and see if you can read the text into your program, like I've done here. I'll show you some of those counting solutions in just a moment. OK, let's display all of the numbers from 1 to 10.
It's that simple. I'm just outputting the value of i every time I pass through the loop. I can easily change the initial value of i if I don't want to see 0, or if I want to count upwards from 3, for example. If I just want to display the even numbers, I can do this. Instead of adding 1 to i, I'm just adding 2 to i every time I pass through the loop. To display the odd numbers, I'll just change the starting value of i. And to count down, I'm starting i at a big value, and I'm saying while it's bigger than 0, do the output, and then subtract 1 from i. And there's a countdown.